One of the hurdles that people have when it comes to getting a handle on their money is the math. Some pe people get so weird about math. They feel overwhelmed by it. They feel stupid when it comes to numbers. So I believe that if we can do a better job engaging people on the basic math, we can help people with their money. And I think I may have a kindred spirit on that. Uh, joining us as our next guest, because there are so many approaches to trying to do that. And today we're going to talk about one that focuses on a little bit of eyeliner and glitter. To make le math less of a drag, we're going to talk about it in drag. Canada's Drag Race alum, Kine, took to TikTok to teach her followers about math. And there's upwards of like what 1.4, 1.4, 1.5 million of these followers on TikTok. She joins us from Kitchener, Ontario to tell us more. Hello there. Hi, Bruce. Thanks for having me. It's great to have you here. I, I mean, my questions must begin with the number one most important question I could ask. Mm -hmm. It is probably the most important that number that our listeners need to know. How many wigs do you own? Oh gosh. Oh, yeah. too many to count. Probably really? like 30 to 40, 30. somewhere around there. Okay. Do you have a favorite? I mean, the one you've got on today is extraordinary, but do you have a favorite? Ooh. Okay. Actually, I have this wig. I haven't found the right occasion to wear it yet. I'm a bit of a shopaholic, I'd say, uh -huh. okay. but it's like this huge yellow foam wig. I haven't oh, worn it yet God, though, but it's, it's fabulous. How long does it take to get a wig into show ready shape? Well, it takes a couple of hours. Thankfully, I learned how to style my own wigs, so I can sort of do it myself. Other queens, they will like hire people to do it. I could style a wig in like two, three hours. Oh my God, amazing. Okay, so uh, I want to know what your um, connection to math was growing up. Was this always easy for you? Did you love math growing up or were you a, a late convert? Um, I, I did love math when I was growing up. It was always my best subject in school. I didn't always think it was like amazing and beautiful and fantastic. I remember it coming pretty naturally to me when I was a kid. You know, my dad was an engineer and he always said that math was his favorite subject. So I guess that sort of that had a, a little influence on me. But um, in high school, I remember my teachers would encourage me to do math contests, which were like extracurricular math tests. Yeah. I know what you're thinking. Ooh, fun. But I, <laughs> I, I am I really thinking did... <laughs> that. <laughs> no, I loved it. I was a total mathlete. And those math contests were sort of my introduction to sort of this fun, creative side of math. Because usually in school, we learn math as in like solve for X, do this formula, get the right answer. <laughs> And yeah, I was like, I was pretty good at that, but I didn't really know what it was for or what mathematicians like did for a living. But when I got introduced to um, like creative math and proofs based math, where there's not necessarily one right way to get to the answer, mm. that's where I started thinking, oh, math is actually quite artistic and elegant. And that's um, sort of my um, message to everyone because I did end up um, studying math in university and it's it's my favorite subject. Yeah. Well, uh, drag's artistic, drag is creative. So sure. let's let's go there. Where was, what was your entry into the world of drag? Um, it's funny, cause when I was young, I totally, I grew up not around drag queens or not around um, any queer people. I thought drag queens were all like men with like some weird fetish to dress as women. Right. Um, but I, it was RuPaul's Drag Race that sort of humanized it for me. And right. I, I sort of got turned on to the show after seeing enough memes on Instagram. And I was like, let me let me tune into this. At the time, I was sort of like experimenting with makeup. Um, so I guess makeup was sort of my entryway into drag. I loved um, watching like beauty gurus on YouTube and I just wanted to be like them. So right. I was like cross-dressing, <laughs> going to school, but not calling it drag yet right. until I saw drag queens on TV and um, on stage eventually, sort of combining that love for makeup and the artistry with performance and dance and music. It was all of my favorite things lumped into one. And once I saw that drag was really um, a creative outlet, that's what really attracted me to it. Okay, so now bring these two things together. I see the mathlete, I see the drag performer, and then there was this alchemy, this insight, this explosion where you said, that's going to be a part of what I do and I'm going to TikTok. It's funny, people always ask me that, but it's it totally just happened as a coincidence. 
I never intended to sort of blend those two worlds together. I really was like Hannah Montana in school. I was like studying math during the day, like studying for my test. And then at night I was like going on stage. I never thought that people on one side had any interest in the other. It was sort of the boredom of the pandemic that sort of got me on TikTok. Um, I, like many other people, I thought TikTok was like just for kids, like to do little dances on. Um, and then once I, uh, I started seeing people do like these skits and these like really funny creative videos, I was like, oh, well, what could I do that's different? Um, because like people sort of knew me in public as a, as a drag queen. Um, but I was like, oh, wouldn't it be funny if I started just telling math riddles and got right. in a video and said, oh, if a car is traveling at 90 kilometers per hour, how long would it take? Because that's kind of just how my brain works. And, right. you know, to me, it's entertaining. But I was like, oh, if a drag queen did that, it would kind of be like the troll the under the bridge. Like it would telling be the, you the It's like the Trojan horse. It was horse. just funny to me, right? Yeah. So I, I put it out there, not really expecting anything from it. Um, and then, like, right away, people started commenting, oh, my gosh, like, Finally, I'm starting to understand math. Um, I would love it if my teacher was a drag queen. You make it seem so fun. Um, so there you have now, it. From then, I became the math queen. You became math queen. Now, I've seen a bunch of your stuff on TikTok. Give us a couple of examples of topics that you cover just to, to whet people's appetite. Um, sure. Well, one of the first videos that went really viral, I talked about how if you take a piece of paper from the computer and you fold it in half 42 times the thickness of that paper um, would extend from the earth to the moon really yeah that was like it blew people's minds i'm sure i'm sure and i love because sometimes you have like a piece of paper with a marker there and you're doing little <laughs> demonstrations yeah sometimes people will ask hey kind why does um zero factorial equal one or why is a number to the power of zero equal to one so i'll sort of um, bring the paper and pencil out and explain yeah, I it. it. I what the thing that you've said that I I can't imagine, I can't recall ever hearing before is the artistry of math and the mm -hmm. intersection of those two things, with, which I think is genius, because a lot of people, my thirteen year old included, sometimes have a hard time making the connection to the theoretical math and what they might use it for in real life. How do you answer that question? It's tough because, you know, the way that math is taught in schools, it's always like teachers sort of teaching math to the test. And you're sort of just taught to memorize these procedures so that you can apply them on the test and then forget them right afterwards. But what I love about math is when you can sort of make those theorems make sense in your mind and you're able to derive them from scratch. And what I like is that all equations, you don't really need to memorize them. You can always start from scratch and get to the quadratic formula. Um, so it's about math really just being a system of patterns and logic and deduction. It's not really about memorizing and um, using symbols and stuff. All of that is more superficial, but really at its core, math is just about logic and, and seeing patterns. And that's how we can use math everywhere. Mm. One of the things, and and pardon me if I don't articulate this as clearly as I could, but many drag performers have different personas mm -hmm. and the makeup and the dress and the hair bring out the different, um, the essence of different characters. Oh, yes, honey. Okay, good. Okay. I'm like, like I think that's so. <laughs> so when you think of that, what are some examples of personas that that are an expression for you? And what's the what's their math equivalent? So do you have a freewheeling character persona that teaches one type of thing and a, like a hardcore disciplinarian, you know, driven sort of person that might teach another? How does that that level come into play? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I guess in a sense, you're right. I do have many sides to me, um, but I, I sort of, my message is sort of just that you don't have to be one thing. You can be um, really girly and want to play um, with makeup and dresses and um, wear bright sequins and rainbow colors. And you can also be really into numbers and patterns. You don't have to sort of just choose one box that society sort of puts you in. You sort of you have the freedom to do whatever you want in life. And that's sort of the message that I put out that you can do anything. And I don't even just do math videos. You know, people will know me for doing wig tutorials. I talk a lot about um, just history and culture nowadays. Anything that I think is interesting and that would enrich 
my life, I think, oh, some other people would probably be mm -hmm. interested in this. Growing up a gay man, I would go to drag shows. There's something mm. in in the LGBTQ culture that is so compelling about that as performance art, but it also really resonates with young people. And mm. we saw that um, with the drag queen story time. Kids love to go hear drag queens regardless of their um, sexual orientation. Mm -hmm. What do you think that is? What's the essence of that for kids? I think drag queens are, are like superheroes. They're like um huge they're larger than life they sort of re represent this idea that when you're an adult you don't have to just wear brown all the time you can still have fun you can still express yourself and do the things that you like to do when you were a kid like put a towel on your head and pretend like you had long hair yeah. um play dress up one day i'm a princess one day i'm a cowboy and i think it's that it's that playfulness that um attracts people of all ages what is next for you? You're looking into your crystal ball with an extraordinary hairpiece and nails that took ages to affix. What's next for you? What's, math, net, what's next for the math queen? Oh gosh, well, I, I just love doing what I do. I love um, educating people. I like doing the short form videos. I'm really just happy um, doing what I'm doing now, really um, being my own boss. But I, in the future, I am putting out a book next year, which I'm very excited for people to read. It's going to be about me and my life and math and drag and all those intersections that we talked about today. Amazing. Amazing. Well, thank you for taking the time to come and talk to us. And thank you for providing such a unique and compelling voice for everybody to learn more about math. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks, Kine.